Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome back to another exciting episode of five great game dev websites. This is volume four. And the entire idea behind this series is basically, here's five great websites. Um, pretty straightforward, actually. I try to spread them out across art, uh, tools, uh, programming, graphics, that kind of stuff. Um, so that, you know, hopefully there's something of interest to you regardless to what your, um, your interest in game development is. But the old common link here is that they're great websites. And again, if you have a suggestion, uh, please do throw it down below. It makes uh, making volume five a hell of a lot easier for me. I'm also going to throw all these together in a playlist. So if you're just looking for stuff to do, do be sure to check that out. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now let's start off with site number one. And site number one is sort of a two for one, or technically a three for one. It's a site called Lowspec, L-O-S-P-E-C. Once again, I will put the links down below. So don't worry too, too much about the URLs. Uh, but this guy is basically the place to go for picking pixel art um, and what I think I actually covered this in the past uh, they have a pixel art editor here but that's not what I'm here to talk about what I am actually talking about is well not even the pixel art tutorials but they do they have a great collection of pixel art tutorials if you are looking for a tutorial on pixel art uh, it's probably here so basically this is the largest resource that I've ever seen or collection of pixel art tutorials out there However, what I am particularly excited about from low spec is actually the palette list. It's a little strange, but this is literally just a giant collection of palettes, and it's a huge uh, boon, even if you're not just doing low graphics work, because coming up with a palette is the underlying look and feel of your art form. So even if you're working in 3D, 2D, whatever, you're trying to you know, ape a certain style. This is a great, great thing. And what they've done basically is they've submitted fixed color palettes to match you know, so here you see uh, the Vic 2 Commodore 64 color palettes. Um, you know, you got uh, Famicube, you've got uh, trying to go back to the old Sega. So if you're trying to remake an old look, uh, so such as the uh, two bit grayscale from the old Game Boy, and on and on and on it goes. They've got a whole whack of fixed palettes here, but this isn't just useful for that. If you're doing uh, marketing materials or a website, etc., a lot of it is coming up with that palette design and this gives you a really nice quick look um, so if you're going for a bit of a retro feel or a bit of a an art style feel this is one of the fastest ways to come up with that consistent palette set and it just goes on and on and on and on and it's a very clean website too so i, I was impressed by that so this is low spec uh, again they have a pixel editor i talked about in the past a um, pixel tutorial index and a pixel palette index so between all those three things, you've got to find something to love here. Uh, next up, we've got Lunar Exchange. Now, Lunar Exchange actually comes up because of a constant request. People really want to learn Vulkan. Now, Vulkan is the uh, low-level predecessor of um, or successor to OpenGL. That's a little bit misleading, a little bit misleading because OpenGL is still going on, but Vulkan does seem to be somewhat the future and where hardware is going. Between Vulkan and DirectX 12, they've moved towards a much lower-level API, closer to the hardware, and this actually makes things a lot more tricky for the programmer. So if you want to get started using um, Vulkan, you want to learn Vulkan, you know, things like uh, how do I draw this handy cube on screen? And this is actually what this tutorial generates. This is a tutorial from uh, Lunar G. Now Lunar G is sponsored. It's a SDK for working with Vulkan. It's sponsored by Steam and it's probably the best place to start if you want to get into Vulkan development at a low level. Um, you know, if you're working at the game engine level, you don't need to care about Vulkan at all. It's an implementation detail and the, um, you know, Unreal, Godot, um, Unity, whatever team are the ones that have to deal with Vulkan in that case. But if you really want to get into a low-level tutorial for learning Vulkan, this is definitely a great place to start um, with the uh, Lunar G SDK and this tutorial. Now, as you can see, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 parts of tutorial to draw a cube on screen. Vulkan is not accessible. It is definitely a lower level tutorial, sorry, a lower level uh, SDK, so do be aware of that. But if you are wanting to learn it, um, Lunergy is definitely a place to start. Now, next up is, this is an old site actually. It hasn't been updated in a couple of days, a couple of years. Um, and it's Pixels, Pixel Prospector's list of postmortems. Postmortems. And I love postmortems. This is actually, I used to subscribe to Game Developer Magazine specifically for these. And basically, this is developer interviews about a game they made, what went right, what went wrong, what tools they used, etc. And you can gleam a whole lot of information from other people's mistakes. And sometimes they're just, you know, damned fun to read. Now, a lot of these are actually going to ultimately link back to Gamma Sutra, which is, or GDC Vault, which is ultimately just a collection of game developer um, articles. But a lot of these are 
are otherwise you know smaller independent teams uh, that also did them as well but you see there's uh, indie games that have come out here as well as um, AAA studios doing postmortems things like uh, Deus Ex, Diablo 2, um, Myth, Neverwinter Nights you know so some of it's a little bit older but a lot of the rules don't actually necessarily change so even if you're just looking for a way to kill some time reading through developer postmortems is just brutally interesting to me and like I said you can learn from other people's mistakes potentially like a lot of times they're broken into a format of what resources did you use what went right what went wrong and then a summary and between those four categories you can, you can get a lot of information actually and while we're on the topic of uh, kind of old uh, this one is actually very old this has been around for uh, okay it was updated recently uh, this was released back three or four years ago but it's still uh, very very valuable so definitely worth uh, pointing out um, Pixar released a whole whack of their uh, seamless textures. So these are basically textures that can be um, tiled and used over and over and over again because the left edge and the right edge, top edge and bottom edge will all seamlessly go together. So these make excellent real-time game um, tile map sources. So if you're doing texturing, etc., these are perfect, especially if you're doing landscapes, etc. You need grass to go on forever or you need uh, marble on a column or something. You, you want a tile that smoothly and seamlessly, that's the word, uh, expands. This is a great use. And obviously, Pixar kind of knows their things when it comes to you know making good-looking graphics. So that is exactly what this is. It's completely free. It is outdated as hell, but that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, we're looking at a 250, a 285 um, megabyte archive of textures with uh, da, 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 13 clouds, 12 coverings, 8 marble, 3 flowers, 8 frames, 11 arbitrary, 11 mill metals, don't know what that is, 13 paper textures, 4 tiles, 5 waters, and more. This is just, if you're looking for just raw textures to work from, this is an oldie but goodie, definitely one to be aware of, especially because of the seamlessness. So this is the kind of thing that if you're a game designer, you're making levels and you need texture maps, the Pixar collection has always been an excellent source, so I will link that one down below. So going from something very old, let's go to something very new. Now if you've been following this channel, uh, last week at GDC I did a video on the new um, NVIDIA RTX and Microsoft 12 uh, DXR or DirectX Ray Tracing. Um, I think it's fair to say that DXR won GDC. Uh, it kind of come down to between Unreal Engine 4 giving away $12 million worth of assets or DirectX Ray Tracing. But between those two, DirectX Ray Tracing probably got the most buzz. And what this is basically is real-time ray tracing. And it's a ways in the future. It's pretty much a hardware generation behind. So we gotta wait for the next generation of um, NVIDIA cards, Volta cards to become you know commonplace before this technology is really here. But if you really wanna jump into the specifics of how it works, um, NVIDIA has a pretty solid developer blog on here that gives you a peek into uh, how it goes. And now, the, the article I did the other day on Microsoft linked to uh, Microsoft Tech blog as well, but it was a little bit less accessible. That was more of a scientist made it as opposed to a game developer made it, if I was to you know summarize the difference here. So they've done a nice little blog of basically how real-time ray tracing is ultimately going to work, including um, ray generation code in the shader, uh, how it works, uh, closest hit shader, uh, and you know the structures behind it, the technology behind it, and then give some links to um, some other forum posts, including the one that I talked about earlier. If you want more details, here is the Microsoft uh, DXR in depth. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit less out of this one than I think than you will out of this one. This one is a, just a nice, great summary for developers. So if you were looking at what is potentially the future for graphics, uh, this is definitely a good read. So uh, that's NVIDIA's developer blog uh, down below. So hopefully between all of those sites, you found something of use, uh, didn't waste your time completely. And again, if you have a site that you think I should feature in a future version of this, I do one of these about eh, once every month, once every six weeks. So if you have a suggestion for uh, volume five, please do let me know in the comments down below. Experience with any of the sites I just listened, also let me know in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.